Hi, welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel. We will be starting in chapter 25. Um, and before we start, I always like to open up in prayer, and I thought that it would be good to open up um, in prayer and bring up the concern of our homes. I live in a, in a small apartment, but I'm so thankful for it. Um, to whom much is given, much is required, a lot of responsibility. I took for granted um, my beautiful home that I had when I was when I was married and um, it was a beautiful home. It was our first home in Virginia. It was two stories, beautiful, but um, maybe I lacked discipline. Maybe I wasn't appreciative to be responsible, to to forward think and look at everything around me and, and to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him what I should do. Cause it's one of my biggest regrets. But I know um, right now the housing market isn't um, one where we, we are too hopeful. A lot of people are, are barely making ends meet and paying for rent in an apartment. And so being a homeowner seems like a, a far away goal. So I thought we should bring that up because we can bring anything to the Lord in prayer. So I thought, well, if I pick different topics, why not that? So please join me before we start in chapter 25. Father God, thank you for, for being here. Thank you for allowing us to come to you in worship and reading, allowing us to grow closer to you. I am humbled because I know, I know you are God, you're big God, and and I'm just me, and I take for granted a lot of time, and I don't worship as I should, and I don't study as I should. So I'm thankful for the viewers joining me, and I'm thankful for this moment to be closer to you and to learn. And I pray that we grow in the faith wherever we are in our walk. Father God, today I wanted to bring up the concern of, of our housing market right now, Father God. Wherever we are, whether we're renting, whether we're homeowners, whether we're looking to buy our first home as a new couple or as a, as a new um, and young businessman wanting to be an investor, may we not be discouraged. May we bring everything that our hearts desire desires to uh, accomplish and work towards me we bring it to you and have faith that everything is possible with you with due diligence with faith and moving in the right direction with you i know all is possible so i'm praying wherever we are wherever the listener is in this in this area of life that you um encourage us that you give us that that seed of faith that seed of motivation that everything is possible all we have to do is have faith as big as a mustard seed and bring it to you and you will listen to our concerns and our desires and you want to give us our hearts desires so i'm thankful for that father god steady our hearts and minds so that we can continue to read today so that they can hear your voice and not mine may we be able to receive a message understand it and one day share it i give you all the thanks and glory in jesus name i pray amen Sorry, that was a little long, uh, long-winded. So, uh, we're in chapter 25, the death of Samuel. Excuse me, touching my face. <laughs> the death of Samuel. This morning, we um, read about where Samuel and, um, I'm sorry, where Saul and David had come to an understanding. David was at a point where he could literally kill. Um, he could take out Saul and he cut a piece of his robe to show him, like, look, I could have done that, but he didn't, and he showed him mercy, and so there was an agreement there, there was peace, and so that's where we left off this morning. So let's begin. Then Samuel died, then Samuel died, and the Israelites gathered together and lamented for him and buried him at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran, David and the wife of Nabai. Now there was a man in Maom whose business was in Carmel, and the man was very rich. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife was Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. But the man was harsh and evil in his doings. He was of the house of Caleb. When David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep, David sent ten young men, and David sent to the young men. David said to the young men, "Go up to Carmel, 
go to Nabal and bring him in my name. And thus you shall say to him, who lives in prosperity, peace be to you, peace to your house and peace to all that you have. Now I have heard that you have shearers, your shepherds were with us and we did not hurt them, nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in karma. Excuse me, I have to, I have a, a lozenger and I feel like I'm doing too much right now. So <laughs> sorry about that. Let's continue. We're in verse seven. Now I have heard that you have shearers, your shepherds were with us and we did not hurt them nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in, in karma. Ask your young men and they will tell you. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. Then Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed from my shearers and give it to men when I do not know where they are from? That's surprising um, because David is well known and he took out Goliath and um, the defeat with the Philistines and the Israelites celebrated him. So it's a, it's a, is an example of how um, how mean or nasty this man is in his reply. He's like, I don't know you. Why would I share my food with you? So David's young men turned on their heels and went back. And they came and told him all these words. Then David said to his men, every man gird on his sword. So every man girded on his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And about 400 men went with David and 200 stayed with, this, with the supplies. Now one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he reviled them. But the men were, were very good to us, and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as we accompanied them. When we were in the fields, as, um, as long as we accompanied them when we were in the fields, they were a wall to, to us both by night and day, all the time we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know and consider what you will do, for harm is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him. So very um, impatient, very curt. Then Ab and aggressive, he sounds like. Verse 18, then Abigail, remember she's, um, she's pleasing to the eye and I'm taking, she's beautiful, his wife. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves of bread two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed, five uh, seeds of roasted grain, and a hundred clusters of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs, and loaded them on donkeys. And she said to her servants, go on before me. S see, I am coming after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. So it was as she rode on the donkey that she went down under cover of the hill. And there were David and his men coming down toward her. And she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain I will, I will I have protected all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that, that belongs to him, and he has repaid me evil for good. May God do so, and more also to his enemies of, to the enemies of David, if I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light. <clears throat> so he's just bringing to our attention that this man is, is forgetting that... Um, David fought for him, maybe not directly, but he um, he stood to gain for 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 David fighting and um, you know take protecting it. Even though they were in the wilderness, he protected the land, if you will. So <clears throat> may God do so, and more also to the enemies of David. If I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light. So. Now when Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David, and bowed down to the ground. So she fell at his feet and said, On me, my lord, on me let this iniquity be, and please let your maidservant speak in your ears, and hear the words of your maidservant. Please let my lord regard the scoundrel Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your maidservant, did not see the young men of my lord whom you sent. 
Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then, let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. And now this present which your maidservant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your maidservant, for the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord, and evil is not found in you throughout your days. Yet a man has risen to pursue you and seek me, and seek your life, but the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God, and the lives of, of your enemies he shall sling out as from the pocket of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you ruler over Israel, that this will be no grief to you, nor offense of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord have avenged himself. But when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your maid servant. <clears throat> She's saying everything her husband should have said. She's bringing... Um, She's reiterating that um, she knows who David is. She's calling him my Lord. She knows that he fought battles and that they stood to gain. Basically, they were protected being part of the land. And that her husband, um, full of evil, didn't acknowledge this. And David, rightfully so, was going to go shed blood. But she came and ahead of, uh, she came to cut him off to show her gratitude and to honor the Lord by honoring him. Okay. So th that was a lot. And she did it without her husband knowing. Okay. And she calls him a scoundrel and full of iniquity. So, um, let me see. But when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your maid servant. So, um, basically just don't forget her and that she is trying to right the wrong that her husband did. <clears throat> 32. Then David said to Abigail, blessed is, the Lord, blessed is the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me. And blessed is your advice and blessed are you because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed and from avenging myself with my own hand. For indeed, as the Lord God of Israel lives, whom has kept me back from hurting you, unless you had hurried and come to meet me, surely by morning light, no males would have been left to Nabal. So David received from her hand what she had brought him and said to her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have heeded your voice and respected your person. Um, I got chills from that because it's such a big deal. She's a woman and she's approaching David, who is meant to be king, you know, and all of his armies. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So for him to say that David received her hand, what she had brought him and said to her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have heeded your voice and respected your person. I think that that's amazing. Now Abigail went to Nabal, and there he was holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry with, within him, for he was very drunk. Therefore she told him nothing, little or much, until morning light. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him and he became like a stone. Then it happened after about 10 days that the Lord struck Nabal and he died. So when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, blessed be the Lord who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and has kept his, his servant from evil. For the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. So the Lord took care of Nabal for him so that David didn't have to uh, shed blood and return the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. Uh, let's see, I'm so sorry. So when David heard that Nabal was dead, verse 39, he said, blessed be the Lord who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and has kept his servant from evil from, for the Lord has returned this wickedness of Nabal on his own head. And David sent out and proposed to Abigail to take her as his wife. When the servant of David had come to Abigail at Carmel, they spoke to her saying, David sent us to you to ask you to become his wife. Then she arose, bowed her face to the earth and said, 
Here is your maidservant, a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. So Abigail rose in haste and rode on a donkey, attended by five of her maidens, and she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Abinoam of Jezreel, and so both of them were his wives. But Saul had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to, to Palti, the son of Laish, who was from Galim. Um, Saul had promised David a wife, and then he recanted, and he um, gave his daughter to somebody else. But that's okay, because David has two wives here. Chapter 26. David spares Saul a second time. Now the Zephites came to Saul at Gabeah, saying, Is David not hiding in the hill of Hakalah, opposite of Jeshimon? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul encamped on the hill of Hachalah, which is opposite of Jeshimon by the road. But David stayed in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul had indeed come. So David arose and came to the place where Saul had encamped. And David saw the place where Saul lay, and Abner the son of Ner, the commander of his army. Now Saul lay within the camp, with the people encamped all around him. Then David answered and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, <clears throat> and to Abishai the son of Zerai, brother of Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul in the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and there Saul lay sleeping within the camp, with his spear stuck in the ground by his head, and Abner and the people lay all around him. Then Abishai said to David, God has delivered your enemy into your hand this day. Now therefore, please, let me strike him at once with the spear right to the earth, and I will not have to strike him a second time. But David said to Abishai, do not destroy him, for who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, Furthermore, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall strike him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall go out to battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. But please take now the spear and the jug of water that are by his head, and let us go. So David took the spear and the jug of water by Saul's head, and they got away. And no man saw or knew it or awoke, for they were all asleep because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen on them. David keeps calling Saul anointed. But remember, um, the Lord's favor had, had left him. And so Samuel and him were not on good terms. And they, in fact, they lived in separate territories, if you will. Um, Samuel has already passed away, but Saul is still a king. And then David is supposed to be the king after him. Um, so David keeps calling him anointed and he doesn't want to kill Saul because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to sin against the Lord. But I just wanted to take a moment to point out how anointed David is because so he was right there and he could have took Saul out and he cuts a piece of his garment and then shows it to him later and they make a peace agreement, right? And so now again, nobody in the camp hears David and, um, and his brother that sneak into the camp and they're all asleep and right there they could have taken um, the sword from Saul and just took him out in fact his brother said I will take him out for you and um, his brother arms and <laughs> David once again says no so I, I see anointing on David's life and the favor of the Lord over Saul he still may have the have the um, seat on the throne over the ter over the land but his favor is not as what David's is. So let's continue. Um, we're in chapter 26, verse 13. Now David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill, afar off a great distance being between them. And David called out to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Do you not answer, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who are you calling out to the king? So David said to Abner, Are you not a man? And who is like you? Uh, okay, I just wanted to make sure I didn't skip anything. Okay, no, I didn't. Okay, so let's continue. So David said to Abner, Are you not a man, and who is like you in Israel? 
Why then have you not guarded your lord, the king? For one of the people came in to destroy your lord, the king. This thing that you have done is not good. As the Lord lives, you deserve to die because you have not guarded your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is and the jug of water that was by his head. Then Saul knew David's voice and said, Is that your voice, my son David? David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, Why does my lord thus pursue his servant? For what have I done or what evil is in my hand? Now therefore, please let my lord, the king, hear the words of his servant. If the Lord has stirred you up against me, let him accept an offering. But if it is the children of men, may they be cursed before the Lord. For they have driven me out this day from sharing in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go serve other gods. So now do not let my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea as when one hunts a partridge in the mountains. Then Saul said, I have sinned. Return my son David, for I will harm you no more, because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Indeed, I have played the fool and erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Here is the king's spear. Let one of the young men come over and get it. May the Lord repay every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered you into my hand today, but I will not stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. And indeed, as your life was valued much this day in my eyes, so let my life be valued much in the eyes of... I'm so sorry. I think that's incredible how he's holding um, Saul's spear. Um, that's amazing. And if I was Saul, I'd be freaking out too. So let my life be valued much in the eyes of the Lord. And let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, may you, be, may you be blessed, my son David. You shall both do great things and also still prevail. So David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. That's the second time. Um, 27 isn't that long. So I think I'm going to keep going. So where we're at um, in 27 is that once again, there was... A peace, if you will, a peace agreement. They left on good terms, but once again, he had something of Saul's to show him. Like I was right there in your space, and I could have took you out, and I didn't, um, because he didn't want to sin against the Lord, because he's calling Saul anointed and his anointed one, and he didn't want to kill him and sin against the Lord. David allied with the Philistines, chapter twenty-seven, and David said in his heart. Now I shall perish some day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape to the land of the Philistines. And Saul will despair of me to seek me any more in any part of Israel. So I shall escape out of his hand. Then David arose and went over with the 600 men who were with him to, to Achish, the son of Mauk, king of Gath. So David dwelt with, I might be saying this wrong, Achish, A-C-H-I-S. H. Achish, at Gath, he and his men, each man with his household, and David with his two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail the Carmelitess. Now, um, he's leaving with his 600 men, and he's leaving because he's thinking that he uh, won't continue to be lucky, and that Saul will eventually kill him. Um, that's how humble um David, I mean, he's, as we know in the Bible, if you, if you hear or um, have studied about David before, he's after God's heart, like he's a man after God's own heart. And um, because he is, he is um, anointed and blessed so much. And he shows so much humility right here. So he's taking his 600 men and they're going to another territory. So David dwelt with Achish and Gath. He and his men, each man with his household. And David went with his two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the Carmelitess, Nabal's widow. And it was told Saul that David had fled to Gath, so he sought him no more. Then David said to Achish, If I have now found favor in your eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country, that I may dwell there. For why should your servant dwell in the royal city with you? So Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Therefore Ziklag had belonged to the king of Judah to this day. 
now the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistine was one full year and four months. And David and his men went up and raided the Geshurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites, for those nations were the inhabitants of the land from of old, as you go to Shur, even as far as the land of Egypt. Whenever David attacked the land, he left neither man nor woman alive, but took away the sheep, the oxen, the donkeys, the camels, and the apparel, and returned and came to Achish. Then Achish would say, Where have you made a raid today? And David would say, Against the southern area of Judah, or against the southern area of the Jehemelites, or against the southern area of the Kenites. David would save neither man nor woman alive to bring news to Gath, saying, Lest they should inform on us, saying, Thus David did. And thus was his behavior all the time. He dwelt in the country of the Philistines. So Achish believed David, saying, He has made his people Israel, Israel utterly abhor him. Therefore he will be my servant forever. I don't want, where are we at? We're at 20. I hate stopping right there, but please join me when we go into 28. Um, so yes, so David fled and he's um, staying in the land of the Philistines. And while he is um, doing so, he goes into other territories that were um, in the agreement of old when, when God um, told the Israelites when they were to take over the land, that they were to take out um, uh, the Canaanites and, and all of those, um, there's all the tribes that they were would fight against. They were allowed to kill them all off. And so he's just continuing that. But um, in the end there, it says he has made his people, Israel, utterly abhor him. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but we'll see in chapter 28. I think it's a first Samuel has turned out to be a really good story, a lot that I didn't know. So please join me and let's just uh, learn together. As always, take care of yourself. God bless you. Bye.